So switching gears, uh, health savings account, totally different topic. Um, so health savings account, what's the appeal? Uh, why do we even want to consider? Um, so it's a considered as a stealth H, uh, IRA for healthcare expenses. Um, if you uh, worked and then you had uh, offers of FSA, flexible spending account, this is similar, but it's more flexible than the FSA uh, in that the FSA has a uh, use it or lose it rule. You have to estimate how much expenses you're gonna incur in a year. Uh, and then if you don't use um, the whole balance and then you can get the balance forfeited. Although these days have some uh, carryover options, but still there is that rule, uh, use it or lose it. Uh, in the HSA, all the money that you deposit into the HA, HSA is yours forever. Uh, there is no forfeiture. Uh, the other thing is triple tax free for the HSA. Um, the contributions going in is tax free. The money staying in the account, you, you can invest the balance. All the growth is tax free. And then when you withdraw the balance uh, for qualified healthcare expenses, it's again tax free. So triple tax free. Uh, you often hear about the HSA. Um, so there has to be a catch. So what is the catch? The the catch is you have to be covered by a high deductible health plan. Like uh, the uh, a few minutes ago, I shared I wanted a HSA eligible plan. All the plans were a bronze plan with seven thousand dollar deductible, and then the. High deductible plan has also has to be your only plan. You cannot have other co coverage um, in order to make the contribution to HSA. And then the other thing is high deductible, high deductible health plan. The, those are all capitalized. They have special meanings. Just because you think the high de the deductible is high doesn't necessarily mean it's a capital high deductible health plan. So it has spe specific qualifications. Uh, you have to be make sure your plan actually qualifies as a true uh, HDHP to qualify for HSA. Um, some other coverage uh, that you don't even think about as healthcare coverage, but officially they count as coverage. So that'll uh, disqualify your HSA contributions. Um, one common one is the FSA, the, the flexible spending account. You cannot have a uh, HSA and a general purpose FSA, or in some employers, they call it an HRA or a different setup. Um, but again, it's a reimbursement account. Uh, if you have coverage from there, then you cannot do HSA contributions. And that extends to the spouse as well. So if your employer has a HSA eligible plan that you enrolled it, you think you're all good, but then your spouse has a general purpose FSA through his or her employer, that disqualifies you as well. Uh, and uh, finally, you cannot be on Medicare because Medicare covers uh, your healthcare. Um, and then sometimes uh, if you enroll in Medicare late and then they have a six month retroactive rule, uh, Jim will probably talk about this. And then you, you think that you were good and you have this uh, high deductible plan, you have the HSA. And then when you enroll in Medicare, Medicare goes back to six months and then that reduces your HSA qualification. Uh, and then another uh, catch uh, for California and New Jersey, uh, they don't recognize HSA at all. Um, just the HSA concept does not exist uh, for Cal the state of California and New Jersey. And they just see it as a regular taxable account. So the contributions are not tax-free uh, for California purposes. Uh, the growth uh, is just another taxable account. All the dividend, interest, capital gains, uh, they're taxed uh, by California and New Jersey. And then finally, when you uh, withdraw, they don't care what you withdraw the money for. Uh, it can be healthcare or non-healthcare. To them, it's just a uh, uh, taxable account. So first on the contributions, you can do contributions to HSA both ways uh, through work. So if you're still working, your employer has healthcare, uh, you have a eligible plan to qualify the, for the HSA, you can do payroll deductions. The benefit of uh, doing payroll deduction HSA is that the uh, contributions are exempt from Social Security and Medicare uh, taxes. Or if you don't go through employer, you can set up an account yourself, you make the contributions yourself, and then you deduct the contribution uh, on your tax return. 
the HSA is individually owned. So even if you set up, you go through the employer, the employer has its provider, uh, the owner is you. Uh, you own the account. Uh, it's just uh, uh, like an IRA. Uh, it's in one individual person's name. Uh, there is no concept called joint uh, HSA. It's just an individual account. Uh, the contributions depends on how much uh, uh, how many people the healthcare plan covers. If your healthcare plan only covers one person, you call, qualify for the single coverage. 2023 is uh, 3850, uh, the contribution limit. If your health plan covers two people or more, you qualify for the fam family contribution limit. The limit is 7750 in 2023. And then if you're 55 or over um, you, in that year, you qualify for another $1,000 catch up similar to the IRA uh, contribution. But the age cutoff is not 50, it's 55. Um, if you're married and you you both uh, qualify for the family coverage, so if you if you enroll in a, a plan that covers both you and your spouse, so officially you both have family coverage, but then you cannot qualify, you cannot contribute more than the total family coverage. So you can split the seven uh, seven thousand seven hundred fifty between yourselves. Um, either one person do it all in one person or half and half or however uh, you split. Um, in the 401k contribution, the contribution limit, uh, the employer match does not count in the contribution limit. In HSA contributions, some employer would do a match or do some employer contribution. That also counts in the limit. So if they contribute $1,000 and your contribution would have to be $1,000 less. Um, and then if you uh, retire or you change jobs, uh, your previous employer doesn't have a HSA uh, eligible health plan, you, your new employer has one. So the qualification is counted based on the month by month, based on the first of each month. So if you, you have an employer, you're, you have a HSA qualified uh, plan uh, until April, um, then you have four months of coverage, and then you retire, you choose a ACA plan, you didn't choose a HSA eligible plan, then for the whole year, you only qualify for uh, one third of the annual limit. So that's how uh, the actual the uh, contribution limit is calculated. Um, on the withdrawals, the withdrawals has to be unreimbursed. So if your employer, your uh, healthcare plan uh, covers it, then uh, you cannot do the qualified withdrawal. And the withdrawal has to be for yourself, your spouse, or a tax dependent. The spouse and the tax dependent, um, they don't have to have a high qualified, uh, high deductible plan. So if you have a health, uh, the high deductible plan, you contribute to your HSA, uh, but your spouse doesn't have one, your child doesn't have one, there you can still use the HSA money to cover their expenses. Um, after you're 65, you, all, you can also use the HSA money to pay for Medicare premiums. And also, uh, based on the time, uh, if you, call it, you contribute to HSA uh, this year, next year, and then five years later, you're on Medicare, you can still use the HSA money to pay for Medicare premium or the out-of-pocket expenses. So when you withdraw, you don't have to qualify for the H HDHP. The high deductible health plan coverage only affects your contributions, but not on your withdrawals. Uh, the Obviously, the expenses have to be uh, incurred after the HSA. You cannot go uh, retroactive, uh, but there is no time limit. So you don't have to take the, uh, take the uh, expenses and reimburse out of the HSA within 12 months or 24 months. So a lot of people, um, as a uh, optimization uh, thing, that they just save the receipts. So they have $1,000 expenses, they pay out of pocket, but leave the money in the HSA and let it grow. So then they can get the growth out of the investment. And then five years, 10 years later, they can come back and you know, use the receipt to uh, do the reimbursement. Um, if you had a flexible spending account uh, through work, uh, they have a typically they have a FSA administrator. Uh, you either have to use their debit card or you have to submit your receipts to get reimbursed. 
uh, but in HSA, it's all uh, uh, by yourself. There is no administrator. Uh, you, just, you just have to be honest and say, I have this, uh, I am re reimbursed at healthcare expenses. And then you can take the money out of the account uh, tax-free. Um, Non-qualified withdrawals, you can withdraw the money for uh, withdraw the money for other purposes, but there is a penalty. Uh, before age 65, 20% penalty, and the money will be taxable. Uh, after 65, it's just treated like a traditional IRA. You pay the regular income tax. Uh, there is no uh, no penalty, but. Uh, you can easily avoid this. There is plenty of opportunity to spend on healthcare. Uh, either you save the expenses or after you're 65, uh, just pay for uh, out-of-pocket expenses. So um, another thing with HSA uh, versus FSA. FSA, typically there is no uh, investment option. You just put the money in there. It's sort of like a cash account. Uh, in HSA, you can invest the balance because there is no forfeiture. There is, you don't have to estimate the healthcare expenses. So you just maximize the contributions. Uh, if you don't cover, you don't have enough expenses, you, you let the balance grow. The like a 401k, if you're going through the account provider uh, through your work and they have their investment options, they have their own fees. Uh, but if you can also set up an HSA on your own, then a Fidelity Investments has the best HSA. There is no fee and it's just a regular brokerage account. You can invest in anything, index funds, ETFs, uh, treasury bills and whatever. Uh, but uh, Vanguard and Schwab, they don't offer HSA because the market is too small. Uh, uh, for the uh, but fidelity uh, has the base best HSA. You can also do both. Um, so if you your work has a HSA provider, you use the HSA from your work. Uh, but then once a year or however often that you prefer, you can roll over the money out of the the work HSA into a fidelity HSA. Then you have the best of the both worlds. You have the all the best investments and no fee. Um, like I mentioned before, California and New Jersey, they still think uh, HSA are just a regular tax a taxable account. Uh, so one way to make it easy for your own record keeping is just to invest in treasuries. Treasuries are exempt from state income tax, so you, you don't have to calculate how much dividends you got in the HSA, uh, you sold something, what is the capital gain in there? The, eight, the HSA provider, they don't provide 1099s because to them, uh, HSA is a tax advantage account. So they don't do the account uh, record keeping for you. If you're in California or New Jersey, you have to uh, do the accounting yourself if you don't, do, uh, don't invest in treasuries. Um, so how whether you use HSA or not. Uh, so first, you should consider whether you want the high deductible plan or not. Uh, to In some employers, the non-HSA eligible plan is actually cheaper and has uh, better coverage. So you should uh, not put the cart in front of a horse in front of the cart or the cart in front of the horse. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so um, First, choose your plan. If it happens to be HSA uh, eligible plan, you might as well use the HSA. Um, if uh, the HSA eligible plan is high deductible, uh, usually it's best uh, if you don't have much uh, healthcare expenses or you have a lot of uh, healthcare expenses that you're gonna blow through the out-of-pocket maximum anyway. So you don't, you might as well save some premium, choose a cheaper plan because either way, you're gonna blow through the out-of-pocket maximum, then you get the HSA tax savings. Um, because there's no use it or lose it, uh, if your plan is HSA eligible, uh, you might as well max, max out the contributions to get the tax savings. Uh, um, so you would uh, pay expenses out of the pocket when you have an HSA. And then if you have small expenses like uh, small office, uh, office visits or uh, prescriptions and generic prescriptions, just pay out of pocket, throw away the expenses, forget about it. Or you can add up and then do a once a year reimbursement. Again, forget about it. There is no reason to save those uh, small receipts for those small expenses. And then if you have a surgery cost, 
ten thousand dollars yes you can save the receipts um, for for the future and then let the ten thousand dollars stay in the hsa uh, to get the growth uh, out of your investments um to maximize your tax savings, as I mentioned before, if you go getting the HSA through employer, uh, getting the contributions through payroll deductions will save uh, your uh, Social Security and Medicare uh, taxes. Uh, but uh, just uh, be aware, uh, lower Social Security taxes also lowers your Social Security benefits, uh, but it's a secondary effect. And usually uh, people with higher income, they usually either already maxed out on the Social Security uh, uh, tax base or they, uh, they're they on the second uh, bend point, so they don't get much benefit on additional taxes paid. So this is a, a secondary consideration. Um, as I mentioned before, if you're going through the HSA through the work, uh, you can do a transfer or do an indirect rollover to a personal HSA. Uh, the transfer is just like a IRA transfer. You go through Fidelity, you say transfer my balance out of my work uh, HSA. The indirect rollover, you go through your HSA administrator, say, pay me the balance of $5,000 out of there. And then you get the check and then you write another check to Fidelity. And then you say, this is a 60 day rollover uh, to your personal HSA. Similar to the IRA's uh, 60 day rollover, you can only do this once a year or once uh, rolling 12 months. So you can do, uh, if you did one rollover in April, next year you do it in May, next year you do it in June, uh, clear off those uh, 12 months mark. Um, for the F, uh, FSA, flexible spending account, usually companies uh, having a HSA eligible plan, they would turn the FSA into a limited purpose uh, FSA uh, that covers only dental and vision. So if you have uh, uh, dental expenses or uh, eyeglasses or contact lenses, you can still use the limited purpose FSA to, re to reimburse those expenses. And then you, you still have tax savings out of those uh, FSA in addition to the HSA. You use the HSA only to reimburse your medical. Um, Catch-up contributions. Um, when you're 55, you're eligible for the catch up. Uh, but if you're married, because the FSA, the HSA is an individual account, it's under only one person's name. When both people are eligible for the catch up, they need two accounts. So you have your account to contribute to your HSA for the $1,000 catch up, and your spouse would set up another HSA to contribute the catch up. And between yourselves, you can still sp split up the family coverage, uh, the 7750. Um, Another quirk on the on the uh, HSA is that uh, adult child. If you have an adult child on your health plan, uh, they're also eligible for the HSA contribution. So because it's based on uh, any person having a high deductible plan. So if your adult child is not a tax dependent, uh, look at your adult child. Does he or she have a high deductible plan? Yes, he, he does. It's on the parent's plan. How many people does that plan cover? Uh, two or more. So that adult child actually uh, is eligible for family coverage. So you, you can have one plan and then the adult child qualifies for the family coverage and then you qualify for the uh, double up for the family coverage. And then when you switch jobs, um, there is this thing called last month rule. Um, so if your previous plan, your previous employer didn't have a HSA eligible plan, but your new employer has one, and then you're covered by the HSA eligible plan on December 1st, that's the last month of the year, uh, this rule says you can actually go retroactive, you qualify for the full year. Uh, but if you engage this uh, last month rule to uh, contribute more than the number of months that you're eligible, uh, then you have to maintain the HSA eligibility for the next 12 months. So if you're sure that you will be on the HSA plan for the next 12 months, uh, in, uh, impose uh, uh, having this last month rule and then contribute for the full year will give you uh, a little more uh, just for this partial year. 
So again, uh, additional contribution, uh, Bogle has a wiki. We have a good wiki, healthcare, health savings account. Uh, I've written a uh, blog post uh, on, under the tag HSA uh, or drop me a line on the contact form.